Good afternoon and welcome to the Modus Consulting presentations for Dynamics 365 Business Central. I am Brian Roberts and today we'll be taking a look at Microsoft Dynamics 365 Business Central, specifically some features relating to customer address and emails. We'll start with some of the stuff like ship to addresses that are commonly used and you may already be aware with. We'll dig into more details, uh, including some contacts, contact emails, and ways of handling some less common situations of having to send uh, certain documents to certain email addresses that may not match the ship to and contact stuff and so on. So we're taking a look here at Business Central. This is the sales order processor role center. And I'm going to start with some of the customer setup. Just hop quickly hop into a customer here. In this customer, we have an address tab and there's a main address here. This is typically your head office address or sort of main central address. It's very common for customers to have branch offices, separate warehouses, things like that. Places where you may need to ship stuff to as part of your sales process. So that's set up under navigate through your ship to addresses. And you can have multiple ship to addresses. In this case, our head office for this customer happened to be in Winnipeg, and there's two ship to addresses up here, Calgary and Edmonton. And I could click on one to open it up, and we can see various address details and so on. And if I wanted to add a new one, I could certainly do so. This code here can be anything you want. These examples here are names of cities, but they could be street names. If your customer uses store numbers or things like that, you could certainly use those as well. The, this code does not appear in any customer documents, but the address of course would. In addition to multiple addresses that you can store for a customer, you can have multiple contact names. So you may have several people. They may be one building or separate buildings, doesn't matter. So you can set up additional contacts here. In this case, this first line here in bold is the company, and then we have John and Robert as two additional contacts. And you could add a new contact very easily, filling out and so on, modifying addresses, filling in this person's phone number and so on. I'm not gonna bother typing in all the information here but they would then appear in the list. So we've got a customer with multiple addresses, multiple ship to addresses, and we've got some multiple contacts. If you regularly ship to the same address all the time, down in the shipping tab on the customer, you can specify your default shipping location. This is not required. Uh, blank just means that it will go to the head office by default, and on each sales order, you'd have to choose the correct shipping address. You also can define a primary contact, which is the person you talk to the most. So this pulls in choosing the contact there and so on, fills in his name, email, things like that, no trouble there. You can switch it and so on. Um, this uh, first time you create a customer, you can actually type in a customer, uh, sorry, contact name here, and it will create a contact automatically. So simple scenarios, you just type in a name and poof, it has done this behind the scenes for you. Of course, you can come in here and add more people at any time. So we've talked about ship to addresses and contacts. I'm just gonna quickly take a look at, let's do a quote where you would use them and a couple of uh, details when using them here. So I'm pick this customer. We are going to ship it to, I've come down to the shipping and billing tab. The default here is the sell to address. That's the one in Winnipeg. I could choose an alternate shipping address and this is the list of ship to addresses. I could say this is going to go to the Calgary warehouse because that's where they want it. You also have the option here of choosing a custom address. This is not part of the customer setup. This is done specific to the sales order or quote in this case. Um, and you could type in anything you want here. So it could easily be different address. This is useful for uh, possible drop shipments or um, sending to construction sites, that type of stuff here. Similarly on the quote, 
you can change the contact. There's three people at this company you deal with, and today it was John Smith who gave you a call. So now that you've done this, uh, well, I guess I should actually quote them something. Um, the main advantages here of doing this is when you take a look at sending this quote, because I have chosen a contact, it has popped in that email address automatically. It's going back directly to the contact. So you don't have to sit here and automatically try uh, manually try and figure out, okay, who was it this sent, replied email, et cetera. Just you've chosen the right address, you've chosen the right contact, poof, it's off, done, sent, and so on. As well, this uh, PDF here, I'm actually just going to do a preview so we can take a quick look at it. We'll, of course, list the correct address here. Sent to our, sorry, this is a sell to address. This is our ship to address here. And notice that we have John Smith uh, selected there. So nicely does that, formatted in a way that is useful for you. So we've been looking at customers. We've talked about the main sold to address. We've talked about the ship to addresses. That's a two layer structure. You can set up a third layer. Uh, it's not commonly required, but sometimes you'll have a situation where you are dealing with sort of the division level and they have a bunch of stores or warehouses in that division. And then there separately is a head office that handles all the financial stuff. If that is required, that third bill to required. On the invoicing tab for this customer, you can specify a bill to customer. So sales, quotes, orders, shipments would go to this customer up here, but when you actually do the invoice, it would go to the separate uh, customer right there. This would be your head office financial only, and you would have to choose the customer here. Um, if you do not have a complex customer structure, you want to leave this blank. There's no need to fill it in. Uh, and just a navigation point, I actually had to do the show more to do that, just so that pops up there. So when we took a look at this quote, I had done my send my email, and I had talked about that e uh, contact email popping in there. There is another option that might be required. In some companies, you have a separate email address or a separate method of contacting people for invoices. So the quote, the sales order, the shipment notice may go to the main customer, uh, sorry, your main contact um, using his email address, but the invoice needs to be emailed to somewhere else, um, not to the primary person. If that is required, so we've looked at ship to addresses, contacts, we're gonna take a look at document layouts. Document layouts, the first time you come in here, this is gonna be blank. And what this means is that it's using the standard uh, invoice quote and so on report design. Um, this is something you can tweak so different customers get different report dates. I'm not gonna try and cover that today. I'm just gonna pull in the default selections here. So it's pulled in a bunch of default report numbers and stuff. I'm gonna just talk about just this one column here, the send to email. What this does is it lets us override the email address used for specific documents, such as my example of the invoice or probably invoice and credit memo. We'd need to go to some special dedicated email address just for those. So I can just fill that in and that would take care of routing that specific document for this specific customer only to a special email address. Um, I actually, I typed in this address. That's perfectly fine, it's easy to do. You also can, if you've already created that person as a contact, I could grab from the, listing, the list of contacts there. So, but this is a typical example. The final thing I want to touch on is contacts in general. Um, we have we have come in here 
to contacts and we are looking at contacts for this customer only. Um, contacts do appear elsewhere in Business Central, although use of uh, the customers is the most common. Um, when we I created a new contact here because I came from this customer, it was automatically added to the customer. It is possible to review and edit the list of contacts completely separately. So this is a list of all contacts in the system for all customers and so on. And I could hop in here and take a look at this guy I created and so on. Um, it is possible to add a new contact here. And if you do that, just make sure you choose the type of person and the, choose the correct parent company. Um, otherwise, it will not get automatically linked in that customer screen. I don't normally recommend adding contacts directly from this list of contacts here. Um, but this situation might occur when you are, for example, doing a mass import of something, and it's easy to miss that detail and not get your contacts linked to the customers the first time around. So we've taken a look at customer setup, ship to, bill to addresses. We've taken a look at contacts and contact emails, and specifically, uh, sorry, document layout emails as well, and specifically looked at where they get used and how to handle couple of sort of unusual situations with needing to route specific documents to specific emails. Thank you for uh, watching today's session. If you need any more information on customer setup or have any other questions about Business Central, please reach out to Modac Consulting. Uh, email and uh, phone number and stuff are on the screen. Thank you.